The agent mode and MCP are available for all GitHub Copilot users now on VS Code. Previously, it was only available for the insider versions, but now it's available for everyone. That probably queued the cursor IDE, clean, root code, and many other VS Code plugins. Let's see how the agent mode and MCP work in our favorite editor cursor, I mean VS Code. Let's open up VS Code, and we need to upgrade first. The version I'm currently on is 1.99.0, and if you don't see the chat window, press Ctrl Alt I to bring it up. And if you're a new user, you might have to click on this Use Copilot for Free button. By clicking on it, we're basically installing the GitHub Copilot and the GitHub Copilot chat plugin. It probably will ask you to connect to your GitHub account if you haven't already. So now we have connected to GitHub Copilot. Click on this Ask, and we see Ask and Edit. So where is the agent mode? It's kind of weird that Microsoft just released a new feature that everybody's been waiting for, but they do not make it easy for you to find it. Uh, don't worry, let me show you how to find it. So go to File, Setting, uh, Preference Settings. And in here, you want to type agent, press enter, and it's basically the first one. You want to check to enable the agent mode. And let's go back in here to check. So ask, edit, and agent. So now the agent mode is enabled. Let's hold on and check what the other settings are here. So this one, we have a max request setting, which will limit the number of requests that Copilot uses per turn in the agent mode. So if this number is reached, then the copilot will ask for permission to continue, basically. For us, the real Vibe coders, we should always set this to as high as possible so that a copilot doesn't have to bother us because we'll be accepting all anyways uh, once copilot finishes coding. And this run task will also check the thinking mode. This is will be the deep thinking feature that we we'll probably don't need for coding purposes. So. I will leave this unchecked. Let's check out here. If you click on here, you will see these are the basic LLMs that we have access to. Right now, I'm using free version. So if we want to add more models, and of course we have to pay, uh, welcome to capitalism. I'm not going to pay now, and I'm going to stick with the Cloud 3.5 model. Let's try if the agent mode actually works or not. So I'm gonna give this prompt, create a new Python virtual environment inside this folder and then name the folder VM. So it's going to enable for all client and basically we have to accept or continue to allow it to run the command. Okay, so it doesn't work. Yeah, that's not what it meant. Um, okay, let's continue. Does not work, so let's go continue. Okay, so now it's in the right folder and then it, it was in the right folder to begin with. So I don't know why I didn't check the folder, the current working directory. So that's fine. It got to the right folder and let's create the Python environment. It actually showed that the agent mode actually works. But I wonder if there's a way to um, just auto run like what we do on cursor, right? So we don't want it to ask us for permission every time. You can just run it. Let me see how to enable that. I wonder if it's because of this. So for users on the free plan, uh, each agent mode request currently uses one chat request. So maybe that's why every time, like each request, it will have to ask me to uh, give permission. Maybe that's why. I think this is complete already because if you look at here, that looks complete to me. So I don't know why this one, it, it got stuck. All right, so basically I pressed enter twice and then that, that helped it uh, to, to get unstuck. So now it's, it wants to activate the virtual environment, sure. So that's not activated. I think this might be a visual bug. So that command has been run and we can confirm that by looking at here, the VMs in front, but this loading, it still shows that it, it's kind of like running or something. So that's okay. So uh, we, we have the virtual environment activated and now I'm gonna say create a simple Flask web app. I'm not going to tell it to install Flask, but I'll just ask to create one. So it looks like I need to maybe pause this or cancel, maybe cancel, all right? Oh, okay. So now we got all of the agent mode. Activate the VM Python environment. That's kind of weird because when I press cancel, it exited out the virtual environment as well. 
that's kind of weird. So it says it's been activated, but I don't see it's been activated here. Um, maybe it's running in another console or something. Anyways, uh, I will believe it. And I'm going to say create a simple Flask web app. It should pip install Flask first. Right. Continue. I don't think this is using the virtual environment. Uh, I think it's just installing on my Windows, on my global Python. That's what I mean. And I think it's done actually, but so the pip install is done. Let me move this out of the way. The pip install is done, but I don't know why this is still loading. I'm going to press enter. I think that's what I have to do to help it to get unstuck. Yeah. So I think this is a bug here. Like it shouldn't be waiting for me, for the user to press enter. Uh, especially I'm a VIP coder, so I, I don't want to be bothered with these things. So this is going to make a template. Okay, sure. We can make a template folder. It made a template folder and now I have to press enter to continue. Yeah, that sucks. Let us add the folder. Oh, no. I think we just activated out the whole agent thing. My bad. All right, so it's now going to create a new workspace. Wonder what that is. Okay, you know what? Let's not do this. Activate the EVM inside this folder. And now I know that I have to press enter uh, on the console each time that they run something. So, so see this one, this is done, but oh, okay. That actually worked for some reason. I don't know why. So I don't want to, this is going to create one. Uh, I have it already. So you know what? I'm just going to do this manually. All right, there we go. All right, so now it's created the requirements file, the app.py file. It has not installed, it has not pip installed uh, Flask yet, I think. Okay, here we go. So now it, it, it specifies Flask inside the requirements and now it's going to pip install everything inside this requirement. So let's continue. Now it's installing Flask. Okay, so maybe that wasn't a bug. Uh, I did not have to press enter here for that loading screen to go away. Okay, now it asks you to run it. Let me see what's in here. Okay, uh, there's nothing here, so it'll be an empty page, but that's okay. Right, our Flux server is running. Let me show you guys. There we go. This is our uh, simple Flux server. That, that, that's really simple. There's only one, one sentence here. So anyway, um, that works. So the agent mode works. That's good news. Okay, let me see if I can ask questions what's in the app.py file okay so it, it's a simple flask web application and then here's what it can do okay that's that's good and in vs code the way to attach a file for context is we use the pound sign or the, the hash the hash sign uh, so it's not the it's not the add symbol it, it's the uh, pound symbol and then we can uh, choose files for example the index uh, what's inside index.html and they should be able to read the file and then tell me what's inside yeah so it's pretty standard HTML. and then there's the paragraph here saying that okay good all right so now we confirm that the agent mode is working i want to show you guys down here if you hover over on this copilot icon you will see your plan usage so now let's test mcp I'm going to close down all these files and to enable MCP, we have to go to uh, file preferences setting. And in here, you can just type MCP that will bring up all the settings related to MCP. Here, the second one, uh, you want to go in here and then make sure that this is set to true. And this is also set to true. Otherwise your MCP will not work. And as well as make sure that this box is checked. So now we should be able to access MCP. We should see a few new buttons here. And the first one says new tools available. Actually both says new tools available. Let me click on that. Now it's going to let us use the existing MCPs that we set up in cursor, but now it's going to let us use them inside VS Code so that we don't have to go back to our old tools. And this is really a smart move by Microsoft. But for now, I'm going to ignore this. 
and uh, what, what is this? Error loading. Yeah, that's okay. Not sure what this is actually, so that's fine. Let's ignore that. So uh, this third icon here, this wrench icon, select tools. Uh, here is where we can add MCP servers. And we're going to try this first one, the command, running our browser tools MCP. And this is basically the same way how it would run inside the cursor. Let's see if that works. So command slash dnpx uh, with this package name. Uh, I don't know what this means. I see. So this is the uh, MCP server name. I'm going to call it browser tool. So once we enter the command, and the next step is to enter a name. This will be a browser tools. I'm wondering where we can see the, uh, what servers we have available, like what servers we have running right now. I don't see anything here. Anyways, let's try running this browser tools MCP server. So this page, and we're going to let MCP controller browser and let's see if the MCP actually works. What's on the web page? No, I'm not asking this one. Use the MCP to tell me what's on the web page. So it's trying to see what MCP is. No, this is not what I want. All right, you know what? Uh, start server let's see what i don't know if this is something that's causing it to, to not work this is also my first time using this mcp server name okay so maybe we can check if this works what's the server name now what's the server time i mean time then it should run this command to tell me the time okay there we go so python this command continue so i think that means that the mcp server works but for some reason that we need to pip install this one uh, which I do not want to. That's okay. What I want to do is I want to know how to properly install this MCP. So if we go down here, command. I think this is okay, but for some reason it's just not working well. Uh, I'm gonna try this. Select this item. What's the selected item on the web page? So it wants to run this. Yeah, that's because we're on the free version. So each time it makes the request, it has to ask us for permission, basically. Let me try to reload the window, see if that helps. So use the browser tool MCP to check what's the selected item on the page. No, it's not the index HTML. No, not this one. No. Oh, there we go. So we refreshed it. And this is now showing, there we go, okay. So we need to refresh. We need to uh, reload the window after we add the MCP. Let me see if that actually works or not. What's the selected item on the page? Okay, so I think now it works. So once we add the MCP server, we need to reload VS Code window so that they can properly load all those MCP tools, which will show up here on the wrench icon. So once you see, once you see there's something show up here, and then once you see all the tools are available, then that means the MCP server is properly loaded. Otherwise it will not work. So it's saying that the current uh, selected item is the H1 and then try Copilot uh, pro for 30 days for free which is exactly what we have right here so that works all right now i want to talk about pricing this is the github pro pilot and right now the free version uh, the one that i was using that one has only 50 agent mode requests and they're not the premium models i think they're just the base model so 3.5 and the pro version this version right now is 10 dollars usd per month and that's going to give us six times more premium requests than free. So the free is 50 and this one will be us 300. And the Pro Plus version, which is 40 bucks, 39 bucks per month. And that'll be 30 times the premium request, which means 1,500 times. Comparing that to Cursor, right now Cursor, I'm on a Pro plan, which is 20 bucks per month, 500 premium requests. And Cursor actually does not have the next tier. So the 500, that's the most that you can get included in the plan. Anything extra that you have to pay extra. Let's do some simple calculation. If I want to get 500 requests, right? So 300 is included, remember. 
So 300 is 10 bucks and the remaining 200 requests, additional ones are 4 cents each. So this means that for the additional 200, we'll have to spend uh, 8 bucks. So basically, if you get the GitHub Copilot Pro and then you want to make the same 500 requests, the same number of requests as the cursor, then you need to pay 18 bucks for GitHub Copilot. Right now it's 10 bucks. If there's no promotion, then it's going to be 19. So 19 plus A will give you 27. 27 from GitHub Copilot, but then only 20 on cursor. I'm wondering what if you make 1,500 requests on GitHub Copilot, it would be 39 bucks. So this one will give you the 1,500 requests, 39 bucks. Whereas on cursor, it will be the 400, so basically the 20 bucks from the pro plan uh, times that would be a thousand, a thousand additional requests times four cents. So on cursor, if you were to make the same 1,500 requests to the same models that you have access to in, in GitHub Copilot, we're looking to spend 60 bucks, whereas on GitHub Copilot, it's only 40 bucks. So I think if you code a lot, I mean, if you vibe code a lot, then you, you're probably better off with GitHub Copilot financially. So what's the verdict? Because this is a new feature for GitHub Copilot. I think there are some bugs that they need to fix first before I can really go with it. And to be honest, if I'm staying with my 500 requests and with the promotion from the GitHub Copilot right now, I'm looking at 18 bucks compared to cursor uh, 20 bucks. So I don't think the two bucks saving justify going back to VS Code. I'm more familiar with Cursor, so I would rather stay with Cursor and not to save the two bucks. So yeah, so that's just me. And then if you're looking to do a lot of coding and if you're going to need the full 1,500 requests, then I think GitHub Copilot is a better choice financially. So which one are you guys going to use? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.